Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us this evening. I'm so glad you're here for another Summer Series chat. I'm having these chats, as many as I can anyway. I've invited people. They have busy schedules as well. So we're trying to get some, some guests in here that I think you will find very either inspirational, entertaining, all of the above. And uh, I have found a wonderful young lady that is always in our chats and now she started making her own content. So I'm really excited to welcome Perla's Precious. And I think she had a little bit longer name, but we'll let her talk about that. But first I'm gonna introduce you to Kelly. If you don't know her, she is definitely a force to be reckoned with, power <laughs> on eBay and all of that. But let me let her tell you about her. And we're gonna be also dropping her links in the channel so that you can subscribe to Kelly as well. She's been my co-host, my producer, executive producer. So Kelly, take it. Thank you, Thelma. Um, I don't you drop my links in the chat. I always drop the guest links, but I don't I don't drop mine. Well, but I want maybe, to. maybe I will because I'm trying to get to a thousand. My name is Kelly Hip Flippin' Mama, or as most people call me Mama. My voice is getting a little better, so I've been resting today. I have had a store, a top-rated store on eBay since 2000, and um, I do jewelry auctions on Wednesday evenings on my YouTube channel, Hip Flippin' Mama, and that is just about all there is about me. All right, Perla. There's a whole lot more. <laughs> Welcome, Hi, ladies. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Perla. Thank you. My name is Perla. I'm um, also a reseller on Etsy and Poshmark. I'm a jewelry lover, jewelry designer, and I love collecting vintage items. I've been doing it for a while. It's been about a year, and um, I love this little business of mine. It's a personal business that I started, and I just love it. So, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Perla. When I was taken aback by you and your channel, and I was so glad to see you making content because I had seen you in the chats for a long time. You had a longer title on your channel. What was it called before? Always. I changed it a couple of times. I think it was um, Perla's Jewelry Box. That was my jewelry brand name. Uh -huh. And I just changed it up because I wanted a whole, to get a new whole channel. So I yeah. thought something smaller and simple. Yeah, I just been changing it all over the place. And I love this name. So it's simple. I do too. I do too. And I love your name. It means pearl in Spanish. So it's beautiful, yeah. very fitting. But mm -hmm. I cannot believe you've only been doing this for a year because you're very knowledgeable. You're always making, you know, wonderful comments in our chats and everything. You have only been doing this for one year. I cannot believe that. Now, is that selling or, but you've been a jewelry lover for a while, right? Um, yes. Well, for the jewelry business, I've been doing it for about like, I don't know, nine years now. Um, I started doing, um, I became a vendor. Like I would do farmer markets, art, arts and craft events. So that's been around like for years. But with this whole YouTube <clears throat> thing or like Etsy business, about two years, I first um, put out my first shop, which is the uh, jewelry. Um, and I was like, well, I want to do another shop, you know, to have like a backup shop. So I got two and my vintage um, items just went like good. So I've been making sales and that's how I just, I loved it. And that's how I started my business. So it's been about two years with the jewelry and the, the vintage shop on Etsy. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm going to say hello to a couple of people in the chat who are here. And then we'll go back to some questions for you, Perla. And again, thank you for being here. We have Lori here. We have Liz at Makeup Zombie, Tracy at Uniquely Me, Don Maserati, Lori Reeves, and Purple Lily. Lydia is here. Douglas as well. Kate Dallas. Thank you guys so much. Sharon Brody. A uh, Bolte, Shannon, Sharon Bolte, I believe. Okay, I was thinking of, of Brody again. And Sandra, yeah. thank you again, guys. But I also wanted to ask you, you're only, what, 30-something or barely 30? You're extremely young, right? Yes, yes, I'm 33. I turned 33 in June. Yeah, Gemini. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm very young, young soul, and I feel young. I look great, you know, keep myself healthy, <laughs> active, and... Yeah, I'm all, I'm all over the place, you know, with my yeah. business, and life, and friends, family. Well, I think that's your, maybe your attitude really makes you look good and healthy as well. I think a lot of times when we wake up with a good attitude, we look even better, right? Yes, that's, that's what we say. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that's what they say. Yeah. You are a but young girl, a young, beautiful woman, but you are an old soul. That's what I was going to say yeah. because of your really? business sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your business yes. sense. Yes, right. Well, I, I know I saw some videos. Oh, what was that? I was saying because of your business sense, it seems like you, you know, you're more of a mature person. You took something from a hobby into a, an enterprise because I know you talked in one of your videos that you learned, you took a lesson. Tell us about that when you just decided, I guess you were already a pretty jewelry fan, jewelry aficionado, and you decided to learn how to make jewelry. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, I guess out of high school, I didn't know what to do with my life. You know, I just knew I loved fashion. I, you know, I don't know. I just loved jewelry, fashion, that kind of thing. And I wasn't working or anything. So I was out and about with my mother, and we went to a couple of stores like Ross, Marshalls. And we ended up at a um, craft store, which is Michael's. And so I was there, you know, looking around. I saw the billboard where they have the flyers for, like, classes and stuff. So I was looking at it and I saw a jewelry. I was like, oh, that's really fun and interesting. And I always been an artsy type of girl, crafty. And I told my mother about it and we took the class. It was on a Saturday, I believe. It was only for like $20 a person. And I bought my little kit, my tools, some plastic little beads to start, you know. And yeah, the class was like about an hour, simple stuff um, that you can make. They just teach you the basics, like how to do like a earring or like a bracelet things like that and i loved it that's when i found my passion and yeah i just took it home and learned on my own and um started that little itty bitty hobby of mine you know and i fell in love with it that's how i started yeah and then people started liking your items didn't you mention that that your relatives started telling you you were really good and then tell us yeah. what went to selling Yes, yeah, so um, my sister was going to have her second child, and she was going to have a baby shower. And I was literally in my room, on the floor, making random little, like, bracelets and necklaces and sets. And um, a light bulb went on. I was like, well, why not just sell my jewelry at the baby shower? So I took a little table out, and that's where people, well, my friend, my family and friends showed up, and they just said, Said, Perla, this is good stuff. You should start selling it. I'm like, okay, that's a good idea. So I did that. That's how I started. Yeah. And that was like around 2006. Yeah, 2006. I always think that selling, you know, I used to sell shoes. I used to sell a lot of different things, perfume. I uh, used to do samples. You know, the ladies are very annoying and spray you in the department stores. We used to actually spray and get our samples back then. Yeah. And it really takes a personality, a hat that you have to put on especially if you're shy and I can be shy. If I meet you somewhere at a party, I'll be the last one to sit and have cocktail conversation. That's just not me. But when I walk into a selling situation, I just kind of like put on that hat. And I think that's what you kind of did that day. That's awesome. It does take a special personality to do that. It really does. Yeah. And I have always been a shy person, quiet, but with this business, I've learned a lot. I learned how to present myself and talk and, you know, and just, sell my jewelry and I learned a lot so I grew up with it you know and it was a roller coaster because the business is tough it's a huge the jewelry is just a, a big competition out there everybody does it yeah so when I became a vendor at the farmer markets the next um, vendor next to me was this young girl she did like beach type of stuff really handmade really pretty little thing she made but um, she was a good competition you know and I just felt like Okay, you know, I gotta present myself more. And when a person comes up, stand up, present myself. And I sold a couple too, so I learned a lot, definitely. Good, good. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's always good. Competition brings out the best in us. I really think that's a good thing. Competition yes. always brings out the best and the best prices, and it's good for everyone all around. But tell us, what is a farmer's market? Is that like a flea market? Yeah, it's a flea market, but farmers is like where they have produce and um, the things that, Vendors come and sell like their vegetables, fruits, um, up to breads, pastries. 
histories and they have like a little arts and crafts section, you know, and that's, they have about everything. That. That's pretty common in California is, and I know the flea markets are big there. They're pretty big here, but they used to be better. They used to be antiques and jewelry. And now it's, you can still find that, but you see a lot of the Chinese imports and yeah, so I, think it's, different. I think it's different. Yeah, it's different. The flea market's more like the, the antiques, you know, and then the farmer market's more like the, vegetables and fruits uh -huh. and that kind of thing shop around and there's a little towns around me so uh, yeah excuse me our farmer market sells meat right out of the back of a meat truck they're local it, it's the right. the the cattle that they raise um they just they sell their meat right out of the back of a refrigerated truck and it is the best i'll bet meat. wow that's cool mm -hmm. that's very unique i like that yeah yeah, yeah. And I came from a family of ranchers, so we we love that fresh steak. You know, you can cut them as thick as you want. Mm -hmm. But that's interesting that that you did that at the flea market, and then you went to what is your favorite platform for selling Etsy? Um, well, Etsy. <laughs> Etsy, Etsy my Etsy's the one. Yes, but I did get into the eBay as well. I didn't like it much. Yeah, it was kind of I don't know kind of hard for me and it took forever and then and then I got into Poshmark right after Poshmark I like is very easy to do very easy to list you know slow but I have made a couple of sales yeah but Etsy's like my number one that's where I make my business yeah but you you switched you mentioned that the market is saturated and it's saturated in many things fashion jewelry everything we could say that the telephone market is is saturated right Everyone right. wants, wants, you know, you to buy their telephone. But how did you switch from jewelry to beautiful things as well as far as glass? When did you start learning about glass and doing that? Uh, well, basically I had to learn just by, let's see. Okay, so I got into the jewelry business. Um, I got my little shop on Etsy. I always had a passion with vintage items. Like I would collect or I would go to a thrift store or antique shop and I'll just look around. So it was like one of those um, secret little things about me that I was like, okay, let me just, um, you know, create a vintage shop on Etsy. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was, um, I, well, my mother had a couple of things in her storage and they were like glassware and I would just look at it. And I was familiar with Fenton, you know, that was like a popular um, brand, uh, company, you know, back in the day. So she told me about it and I was very intrigued by it. And I was like, well, I want to learn more. So that's when I started going to um, like thrift stores because they have a lot of like the, the vintage mm -hmm. um, glassware on the thrift stores and, you know, and antique shops. So I learned. And while I was learning, I would do my research on an item. I would go on Etsy and I would learn the name, where it's from. And I just learned from other people, from mm -hmm. other people's shops. Yeah. So I would go Fenton. and do my research. Fenton is still very popular. It is still mm -hmm. extremely collectible. Oh, yeah. Fenton, I have some Fenton. I've got Fitz and Floyd. All of those are wonderful. Yeah, I I right Tracy here. sold a really nice piece. Uh, Tracy, I have a piece right here. I believe I got it at the store. It's a Moons and Stars Fenton piece. I love it. It's a little candy dish. So it's little pieces like this I like, you know. I love collecting this. Is that blue so, or purple? It's a blue. It's gorgeous. It's a nice blue. And I have found um, like a red and orange color. Mm -hmm. I sold it already, but this is one of my favorites. So I love collecting this type of stuff. It's very uh, rare. We've got a question for you, my love. You yes. mentioned me, Tracy, would like to know that how do you market or advertise for your Etsy store? And um, do you use Instagram or do you naturally gather your followers without needing to attract your buyers? Oh, that's yes, a great um, question, Tracy. Yeah, very good question. Um, yeah, I just go through social media like crazy. I've done that for years with my jewelry. And I just kind of know how to um, present my jewelry or like my shops. And I just like post, post, post. So I have Instagram, Facebook. Um, Twitter, now YouTube, so that helps me a lot. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start a YouTube channel is to, you know, film my stuff. And then from my YouTube, I'll share my videos. 
put it on my Facebook and I have lots of friends and family there and they see it and it helps me a lot with myself. So yeah, I just post on, um, yeah, that's what you media. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. That's where the collectors mm -hmm. are now for sure. Yeah. But you said your mother was yeah. the collector and she had a storage unit full of Fenton. Is that how you were first exposed to the glass? No, no, she just likes collecting. <laughs> she loves collecting all this junk and she keeps mm -hmm. it for years, you know. And so, yeah, I just told mom, hey, I'm going to start a business. Do you have anything that I could sell? She's like, yeah, I have a lot of couple of things. Let me show you. And that's all she, she had like a couple of um, candle holders, mm -hmm. things like that. And I was like, oh, that's cute. So that's where I started. So, no, she just collects. You and know? your best sources, where do you find when you've got yeah. some really nice glass? Have you found it at Goodwill, garage sales? Everywhere, um, thrift stores, yard sales, um, flea markets. I've been to swap meets, estate sales, and family members have gave me some things too. So yeah, everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now I, you know, I love handbags and jewelry and all of that. And I seem to have, I mean, you know, with experience, you get an eye for it. You walk into a counter. There's something about the glow of some kind of gold. You can see a leather bag from you know ten feet away, and you can just say, "Hey, that looks like the real deal." What about glass? How do you spot something that's not just you know from Walmart? Um, well, for what I've learned on my own, yeah, there's it's hard to find what's real, what's not, mm -hmm. what's you know fake or whatever. But see, with me, I did my research on vintage items, so I could just tell what's vintage and what's not. Um, but there are some pieces that look like you can buy at um, Ross. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, one, so it's like really similar. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm with the goblet glasses. I look at it and I could just tell, you know, mm -hmm. how they paint it, what it's made out of. I have to hold it and see it. But sometimes I have bought a couple of um, goblet glasses. Right. They're just casual, like from our era. But I sell it anyways, you know. Yeah, but I'll put it on my Etsy shop, letting them know, you know. So is it weightier? Do you think it's a weightier piece? The colors are different as well? I think it's lighter. lighter. Yeah, I oh, think it's lighter because I have um, found a couple. Yeah, it's lighter. The glass. Mm -hmm. Like this, it's really heavy. Right. And I don't know. I could just, you could tell. You could probably see it. But if it's like a random here, I have some um, examples. Like these. Right. These blue, light blue goblet glasses, to me, they looked like from Pure One, you know. Uh -huh. But I searched it on Etsy, and they're vintage. But it's just regular glass, but it's kind of heavy. Okay. And it's really good made compared to the well, ones. The vintage would be heavier than the contemporary stuff. Yeah. 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 Do you want to show us some more? Yeah. So I just like, look. Yeah, yeah. Do you have some more pieces? Yeah. So I just show? test it out and feel yeah. it. Excuse me? Do you have some more pieces you want to show us? In yes, glasses? I have a lot actually. Well, my favorite purple. That's like my favorite color. So I have a couple mm -hmm. here. There's like two shades of purple that I have found. Let me bring it out really quick. So I like, this one's called the amethyst purple. It's like the dark color Oh purple. yeah. Yeah, so these ones, my family member got these for me. A cousin of mine was like, Perla, I have a couple of glasses from my grandma's house. Where do you want them? I'm like, sure. What do they look like? And she sent me a picture. And I'm like, yes, I want them. So she gave me like 10 of these cups. So these sell really well on Etsy for me. The purple is really unique and rare to find. So I was like, yes, I was super excited. So I got them. For free. Well, <laughs> they're them. gorgeous. Yeah, I these are like fraction. They're like jewels. Yeah, they're so amazing. pretty. Love the color purple on these. Mm -hmm. I don't know the design or the name of these, but I'm gonna search. <laughs> so yeah. I haven't posted these up. I haven't listed them up. So these are really cute, and they're coffee tea glasses, you know, cups. And then these ones are tea cups. They're different. Yeah, you are the amethyst purple colored. Those are really gorgeous. Pretty. I love yeah. those. And I love cute those. little pointy handle. Yeah. I love it. Beautiful. Compared to these. Really pretty. So these ones I have, I found these out of Goodwill, I believe. It came with um, three plates. 
Mm -hmm. I just brought out the cups for you guys. But yeah, I have like a couple. So these ones are really cute. I like these little teacups. And then this one's a lighter purple, a lavender. It's clear. Oh these my. are like these little champagne glasses. Mm -hmm. Love the floral design around them. Super pretty. pretty. Yeah. And they're really tiny. But yeah, um, I've been searching them on Etsy and I hardly see them. So it's like, to me, it's like hard to find. Mm -hmm. So I found those ones at a Goodwill. And then this one I found at a little local thrift store. It's a little candle holder. So these are also vintage. I think they're from the 80s. Someone has it on Etsy for like 35. Uh -huh. There's supposed to be two of them, but I only found one. So imagine with the other one, it would have probably been like around 40. Do you find, or if you had the cup, do you think you would, do you think, do you think you would make a uh, better profit selling them as a set or does it depend on the, the item or do you individual, how do you do that with glassware? Yeah, I think with the full set, it's more better. You know, because it's the full set. Everyone's looking for the full set, but sometimes people are looking for like, oh, I broke a, I broke a cup, and then you look for a spare cup. Exactly. So it's always good to have either one. But I always love to have the full, the full set. set. It's even better because you, you know, you get to pull up the price. You know, but yeah, I think it's always better that way. Mm -hmm. I do both. You know, whatever I find, I find I get it. You know, I don't like to let it go. I'll just grab it and yeah, people yeah. have lots of randoms. You know, yeah. Like for for example, I had like the red one that I told you guys Stop about. Stop telling me that. I'm in love with that thing. It's so gorgeous. It's so pretty. <laughs> I know. I, I just felt looking at it. I know. It's so pretty. So I found a red one like this and I didn't have the lid. And a lady on Etsy goes, hey, I have this part. Do you have? No, she had the lid, but she didn't have this part. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. So I sold it to her and she had the whole complete. Mm -hmm. she has a lid and my item she sent me a photo she was happy it went to her safe you know and she was excited so that's why i'm saying like it's always good to have you know either piece you don't have to have the complete but if you find the complete one it's always better right yeah. right that's awesome where do you display them or store them i mean i would imagine i'd want to see them but then that, <laughs> you can't oh use them if you're listing them either with something that delicate right right i mean i used to well my workspace is in my room i do everything in my room you know mm -hmm. but when i first started my business it has grown and grown and grown so my mom was like mom where can i store my stuff i don't want to be going outside in the shed every time so right. I love you. my mom was like well I, in the in the hallway we have a hallway where we have shelves it's like a library slash storage so right. she told me that she took out all the stuff. I'll let you take that space, and that's where I store all my glassware. And then now I have boxes, and now I just place it in my room. I have like shelves here, all over the place, all I'm over the place. So tempted to use those beautiful glasses. I know. Yeah, it's scary too because there's times where I'm I am scared it's gonna break when I'm shipping it. But I also learned how to. Um, learn how to ship, like learn how to package things well. I also did my little research on that because I don't want to, you know, break anything. Again, again, guys, she does have a channel here on YouTube. We'll be linking that in the description box and in the chat. And uh, she's really starting to make a lot more videos. I hope you do more videos on shipping and things like that and on your research because I think people are very interested in, in going into other areas of reselling you know jewelry like you say can be saturated but so is a lot of other things but i think it's wonderful when you can find something else that really gets your attention that way and can be lucrative for you as well you also are starting to collect those wonderful jewelry boxes from the 70s and 60s did you want yeah. to share some of those yes and i saw you Thelma. you always, i see your pretty little things in the back and i'm like oh i love her jewelry box but yeah, I love collecting those too. They've always been my favorite. But I do have a lot, so I wanted to come out here. And I did a live video yesterday about mm -hmm. this, but I was like, let me show it. Let me show again, just in case. The people yeah, uh, well, well, I have to let you know, honey, that we are fighting in the chat over specific jewelry boxes of yours. So <laughs> I would suggest an auction. Yes, they're I cool. would okay. suggest an auction on them. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. And I'm supposed to be listing these up on Etsy because I have sold a couple on Etsy. So if you guys have Etsy, sell those jewelry boxes because they do sell. Oh, they do. Wow. At first it was slow for me, but out of nowhere it just picked up and I had like five. And yeah, so now it's empty. I gotta like list up and put all these in there. But so yeah, so I have a couple. Um, and I guess I'll show you guys. Okay. So from the small ones, I have this one. This is one of those casket ones, I think that's what they're called. It's Buxton? pretty heavy. <laughs> Light blue. Yeah. Those it's are a nice. pretty floral design here. Sheer fabric and then the velvet interior. Has a couple mm -hmm. of stains, but you know, it's old, so. That's, That's easy to clean, thing. Perla. Yeah, right. I know. I would I'm gonna clean it really good. This one I got on the thrift store. Just don't rub it, honey. When you clean it, don't rub it. You have to dab yeah. it. Don't rub. Because it'll come right up. And one thing I like about it is like the smell of vintage. That's what I like. The smell <laughs> of the vintage, yeah. right? Selma? It's intoxicating it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is a cute little one here. And they're called caskets. And this one oh, does really? have a brand. I can't read that, but there's like a brand right here. So it's a good condition. So I, I liked it. It's pretty heavy, good quality. So this one was a good find for me at a thrift store. And then I have a tiny little one here. These ones are the the little um, vintage yeah. velvet ones. Yeah, those are nice. Isn't that pretty? I love the color inside. Good condition too. Got this one out of Goodwill. Super cute. It's very tiny and small. Cute little box. So I grabbed this one too because it was good condition and I like the color. So yeah, and so you can store, yeah, and you can store all those little you know rings and earrings and stuff like that. So this one is really cute. So I like this one too. It was two ninety nine at the Goodwill, so I grabbed it. And then these ones are the ones that um, are like the medium size ones. So I have a couple of these. This is a light pink one. Oh, I love the pink. Cute. That is so pretty. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, the inside's really good condition, but the outside, it's a little, see, like I got to fix this part. It's coming out. Mm -hmm. but just glue it, you know? But this one's really cute. I think I got it at a Goodwill too. So yeah, this one's really cute. And then this one's another pretty pink, but it's all pink from the outside. Oh my gosh. I love this one. Very pink unique. Pink too. is so 60s. I love it. Right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pink ones too. A lot of people have them on eBay and Etsy. I've seen them. So the pink is really popular. They're getting very high. And the red ones. Yes. And the red too. The red's popular. So this one's a cute little pink one. I love this one, good condition. At a Goodwill. So yeah, I always find these at the Goodwill. <laughs> and thrift stores too. Yeah. Um, so the big ones, I have a couple of big ones. I have two big ones. Yeah, I saw the, small that. Ones, the small ones are convenient. Yeah, so this is a brown one. Ooh, that's a nice one. And it's a nice um, cream color inside. I love this one. That was cute. And nice. I have so many storage in here. Mm -hmm. But this one does not smell good. <laughs> I got to clean it. But it has this key. Because usually you don't find the keys. So I'm like, oh, it's perfect. It's complete. Good condition, but I just got to clean it in there. It's all dusty. So yeah, this one's a really good one. At a Goodwill bottom good condition yeah so these ones i love to find these are pretty good i love these maybe if so you not open. Open. maybe if you leave them open for a little while the smell might go away yeah i, I gotta do that yeah because it smells like cigarettes or cigar or something like that oh yeah yeah and here's this one which is an orange one. Oh, that's different isn't it very unique? I like the color. And this okay, one has a lot of them. <laughs> I know it has its key, so that's good. And these are listed on your Etsy shop? Not yet. 
Not yet. They're getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> She's so. going to call me first and let me know before she hits the button. Oh, my gosh. They're so cute. And the outside's pretty dirty, so I'm just going to clean it up, you know, and, yeah, it's pretty stained. Yeah. I can't believe how collectible they are now. I know. I told the story about not liking when I got one for my for a Christmas present from my now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, and I was expecting an engagement ring. And instead, I got a leather box, a leather jewelry box. And I hated it so much, it always reminded me of that Christmas. And now I want them back. Now I want to rebuy them all. Yes, I know. <laughs> and then this one is the last one, I think. But this one is my favorite. This is a purple one. This oh, is the I one everybody that. wants. Everybody yes. wants the purple. Yes. Yeah, we saw that Perfect. one. Let so. me know. So this one has a little story. A Can story? I tell you the story? Yeah, this one comes with its little story. So this was, I got this at a local thrift store. Um, and we're about, to, my mom and I, my dad would always go with me. And, um, we were walking out and I was like, mom, where's dad? Oh, he's back inside. Go get him. So I went to go get him and I was walking in there all fast. And there was an aisle that I walked through. They had like, it was like probably the arts and crafts section. It was just a bunch of, it was messy, like a bunch of stuff. Like they just stuffed all the items on the, on the shelves. So I look and it's like this, it's closed. Right. And I love looking for stuff like this. I love collecting them. So my eyes went straight to it. And I was like, oh, there's a jewelry box. I opened it and it was purple. I screamed. I literally oh screamed God. loud. Oh Everyone God. looked at me, but I didn't care because I was all excited. <laughs> and my dad found me like, there you are. Why are you screaming? <laughs> like, look what I found, dad. And so, yeah, so I found this purple one. So things like that, you know, I like finding like out of nowhere. It just pops up, you know, and I wasn't looking when I was at the thrift store. So it found me, you know, so mm -hmm. the purple really? one is very rare. It's very rare to find because I hardly find them on Etsy, eBay. There was a couple, but I did find one on eBay that I, that I bought myself and Etsy. So that's a whole different story. But so, yeah, this one's really cute. Good condition. It's just this little color. color. Yeah, it's like discolored here, the fabric, but that's okay, I guess. So yeah, I found oh, a one. Kay Dallas says that if you put crumpled newspapers inside that jewelry box and close it, that it'll absorb the odors. Oh, okay. I'd never heard That's of that. Yeah, I'll try okay. that. Yeah. Thank you. What's and then the I have shop? More. Excuse me, Thelma? What's the name of your Etsy shop? It's um, Perla's Vintage Shop. Perla's Vintage Shop. Yes, on Etsy. So go on over. <laughs> I have a sale going on right now, 10% off. It's okay. a summer sale. So, yeah. And are you selling jewelry there too? Um, Vintage jewelry, yes. I started the vintage jewelry as well. And I'm going to thank you guys because you ladies have like made me like, I'm going to sell vintage jewelry too, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm selling vintage jewelry as well. Mm -hmm. But you stopped selling the ones that you were making, right? Because you were, had started there because you could sell your items. Yeah. Well, I still have my my um, my um jewelry up still on Etsy, but it's not doing very well. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really been making anything yet because of this business. It's just been really busy. Yeah. So that Etsy, my vintage items have been really going well for me. So I got stuck with that. But yeah, I still have my um, jewelry, my arts and crafts. That's jewelry. what makes you. A, that's what makes you a smart businesswoman. You know, sometimes we have to put our own ideas and our own dreams on the back burner. When you had, you know, a notion that your jewelry would do well, and it was your passion, but then you saw that other things were selling better for you, and you you didn't take it personally. I think that's the the important thing to take away today is that you don't have to take your ups and downs personally or as failures. They're all learning experiences, you know, that you were still able to now, even from jewelry to glass. I think that's wonderful. Yes, and I like to try other things, new ideas, you know. I just, 
yeah, I just like to try all these different ideas, try the business out, see how that goes. If it doesn't work out, try a new one. That's just how I always been, you know. Yeah, so with my jewelry, it didn't go well. Okay, got to find me another way to make money. So I found the vintage stuff and jewelry boxes and vintage jewelry and things like that. So And purses, too. I yeah. started um, collecting vintage purses, which I love, too. So... Yeah, and I, I see your videos when you show your vintage um, purses or, you know, fashion bags, Thelma, and I'm just like, yeah. So I like watching. I learned from you, too, so I like watching oh, that. Thank yeah. you. Herla, well, could, you, could you, I'm sorry, Thelma, could you drop your Etsy store in the chat? It's not letting me do it. It keeps telling me, error, try again. And I know I've got the right shop, and it's the right link, but it's not letting me put it down. So... <clears throat> if you get a moment, can you drop it in the in the chat? Yeah. Yes, I'll do yeah. that. I think okay. she's a moderator already because, like I said, she's been a wonderful asset here on, on YouTube for a long time in everyone's chat, just always very, very uh, constructive and, and wonderful comments. So we're happy that we were able to talk to you today. What, was, what would you say, Perla, is the best item you ever flipped as far as glassware that you just couldn't believe what someone paid you for that um a purse a vintage purse i believe because that was when i didn't know much things about purses mm -hmm. or how much they were worth but this was recent actually it was a 1970s white like a white cream beaded bag like a handbag mm -hmm. and um i found it like for a 199 i think at a thrift store and I saw I did my research I wanted to know how much this was and it was like around seventy dollars and I even went to antique shops and I found a similar one at, at a antique shop I believe around my area and I was like oh my god that's a lot so I posted it for eighty dollars on my Etsy to start yeah and I had it on Poshmark nothing on Poshmark and it sold on Etsy for eighty dollars yeah I was, like, I was so shocked Etsy's great. Etsy's great. Yeah. Vintage stuff. I had no clue. So things like that, you know, I just did. I bought it because I thought it was cute, you know, and I didn't know how much it was worth. So I just looked it up. I was like, okay, let me just pull up the price a little bit. And yeah, someone bought it for $80. I was like, wow. What was the brand and style? Was it like a. It had no brand, but the style was. So it was just like a simple handbag, all mm -hmm. beaded, like beads, mm -hmm. like, like it was like threaded. And the, the trim, like the rim of it was like a pearl, mother pearl type of, um, oh, yeah. like, you know, the, the design is really pretty. Gold tone, kiss class, really cute from the 70s, I believe 60s, 70s around there. How nice. Yeah, good quality, good, and it was in good shape too. The inside, no stains, no nothing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's why I was like, okay, it's good quality. Let me just pull up the price for 80. <coughs> so, yeah. What about a glassware? What was your top seller in glasses or um, anything like that? I would say the goblet glasses. The goblet glasses, if you have more than one, it's worth a lot. Mm -hmm. Like the set, those ones sell really good for me on Etsy. So I say the goblet glasses, like stuff like this, you know, the glasses like that. Mm -hmm. These sell really well. The amber, um, the green, you know, the king's crown, that kind of stuff that sells really well and it's really high priced. Yeah. What is, the king's crown? What is that? Um, here, let me show you guys. This is the king's crown. See how it's like Ooh, has that design? That. Uh huh. And it has like a little, um, I don't know, I can't explain it. <laughs> but this is like yeah. the green. They have I amber color crown. Too. Yeah, I can see that design looking like a crown. So yeah. how did you get so knowledgeable? Did you buy books or are you just going on the websites? Learned on my own. I learned on my own self-taught mm -hmm. person. So I just learned on my own research. Google, other people's right. um, Etsy shops. You just to see, click on it. Okay, that's what it's called. That's right. what it's made of. That's how much they're asking for. Okay, you know and just make my own prices up mm -hmm. yeah and Etsy has communities are you a part of any of those communities you know like the glass or anything like that no i heard about it too but no i haven't no i'm not i would like to you know just be part of it because 
I want to learn from other people too. So yeah, mm -hmm. I thought about that. Yeah. But no, not yet. <laughs> uh, Connie from Jameson's closet asks, do the goblets have to be a certain brand or can they be just fancy no names and they'll still sell? I think they still sell because the vintage ones don't have the names and that's, it's like Fanton or um, Avon, but no, these ones don't. It's just, they're all, they all come in different shapes, sizes, um, you know, design and everything. So no, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And, um, was I going to ask you? Glass here. Do you do you do anything here on YouTube as far as communities? Is there a certain channel that we should know about that you love about glassware? Um, I have I have been watching this one guy. I forget his name because he hardly posts anything on there. But mm -hmm. when I first started my business, um, I started searching on YouTube like how to like look for glass and stuff like that. But I remember I came across this old man that would talk about glassware like the mm -hmm. like the um the air the air blown glass that kind right, of stuff right. mm -hmm. glass vintage glass and i was like okay so i kind of learned from him but i only watched his videos like once or twice and that was it yeah but i forgot his name i forgot what he was called but yeah and there was a couple of um youtubers that i searched for um they're more like the vintage um sellers like like I am. So mm -hmm. there's a bunch of like these ladies that will like talk about like their items where they get at the thrift stores, things like that. So I learned from them too. But I don't remember their names. <laughs> and that's what brought you to YouTube too, isn't it? Did you want to do like teaching videos as well? Or did you want to try to make an enterprise out of YouTube as well and get customers or anything? No, I just started YouTube for fun, you mm -hmm. know, to do something for fun, just to show what I love to do. I'm not thinking of it as like, you know, to go big or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just for fun to show, you know, and just to do a little show and tell and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe to help my business a little bit, you know, but yeah. I, I think that. it's always helpful because you'll get followers that like what you're doing and they'll give you information. I can't tell you how many times I'm looking through a jewelry bag and everyone is giving me advice just the other day i found that little box of gems and if it hadn't been for the people that are much more knowledgeable than i am telling me oh that's an amethyst or that's jasper or no that's not a snowflake uh that's actually or not a dalmatian but a snowflake obsidian and i you know had no idea so that's the good thing about it is to keep posting yeah. your videos and showing us what you find because again like you do with etsy you'll get more knowledge as well yeah. How do you see your, your videos growing a bit and, and what you can do for, for others as well? Yeah, I noticed that too. When I started my um, YouTube channel, um, I didn't know anybody, mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't know all of you guys, but I searched you because of your jewelry jar and jarring videos. And I just, I liked you. I liked this. I'm like, oh, look at this young woman you know because oh, right. <laughs> i loved your style you know your fashion and i was just like okay i like this lady like who, who's she about and i just loved your videos i loved how you presented like the jewelry you know and i just got Thank stuck you. watching you and then i started getting into your live streams you know just saying hi to everybody and that's how i got to know all of you guys you know all the youtubers like you kelly you know and yeah so it's just goes around comes around you know <laughs> yeah so and your yeah. family supports your business right they they help you with right. everything you're doing right now that's mm -hmm. awesome that's awesome to see that you you ran with that hobby and yeah. uh Tr tracy wants to know in the chat if you use worth point or any other uh comping website no i don't no i don't do any of that no no, I'm not sure what that is actually. <laughs> it's a worth point to a website that you pay. It's like a hundred dollars a year, but you can go. It shows everything that's sold in the last year, um, like on all the sites, and so it just compiles it into one site and tells you what things have sold for. Oh yeah, I heard about that, but no, I don't do that. 
I just keep track of my receipts and what I'm selling because Etsy does it for you kind of, you know. But no, I don't I don't do any of that. No, I should maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm learning, you know, so. So you just yeah. use Google, primarily Google and your other comps on Etsy and on eBay, right? Yeah. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, I just like to do my research and just look at other people's stuff and what's selling and, you know, just learning from there. Yeah. Well, I hope your channel continues to grow. Is there any other uh, questions, Kelly, that we got in the chat for Perla? Uh, no, that was the last one. All right. Well, I hope your channel continues to grow, Perla, because you're a very pleasant personality. You bring in a, a, what we don't see often, which is a young woman making something of a hobby into an enterprise. I, I just admire that so much because a lot of times, you know, young people sit around, like you said, with what am I going to do with my life? Well, you did something with your life and you've made something really a good success for you to pay your bills. And I mean, I can't, yeah. uh, I can't uh, see anything wrong with that. And I, I admire that. And I'd love to see videos like that. I hope you continue to do more. Show us how you ship all that delicate glass. You know, do your hauls, show us what you found, how you found it, what's what, you know, got caught your eye about it so that the rest of us, if we run into those treasures, we can know what we're what we're looking at. I know nothing about glass. I was telling Kelly that my neighbor has a, a what do you, I guess a china cabinet full of her mother's depression glass. And she asked me about it because she knew I'm an, an eBayer and i couldn't even make a reasonable offer because i had no idea what i'm looking at so it's really interesting and wonderful that you're doing that i really appreciate it do you yeah. have any closing thoughts for our viewers or your followers here um yeah just um thank you guys for watching and i'm excited that you guys will you and kelly you know wanted me to come on here and i've always been watching you you know and kelly and people that go on the panels, like, I want to do that, you know, and just to present or just chat with you all and get to know you guys. And so thank you for having me here. And yeah, um, I don't know how to link my, um, my shop on here, but should I just tell you guys what it is? I don't know how yeah, to do it. Tell me the name again, and then I will do it definitely in the description box so people can find your store and your channel. Okay. And you said it was Perla's Vintage Shop? Yes, on my Etsy, it's um, Perla's Vintage Shop. Okay. My jewelry is Perla's Jewelry Box on Etsy. So you have two stores. Yeah, two stores. Okay. Yeah. That's my jewelry one and my vintage one. Yeah. That's so I have two. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, we will link it there. But uh, again, if you don't have anything else to say, we're going to close it down. Uh, and uh, again, please be sure and subscribe to Perla's channel. She does wonderful yeah. videos and little uh chat videos and hopefully you'll do some more live streaming we enjoyed those when you bring all your pretty things to show us yeah you're, you're a great inspiration that's that's why i wanted you on here because you're a great inspiration at your age so your are third. you guys so are you guys oh, thank you. Are my inspiration yeah thank you so much it's, very it's nice to see <clears throat> it's nice <clears throat> to see a young person appreciate vintage so much exactly it is yeah exactly. yeah so, and hi and to everyone in the chat. Sorry, I didn't get to talk with you guys, but thank you for watching. Mwah. Kisses. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. I have to do a few other things today. Yeah. Kelly, thank you so much for being here. Be sure and subscribe to Kelly as well. I hope she dropped her link. Otherwise, you'll find it in the description. And come back for another chat. We hope to have one next week. And I should have my uh, Sunday series as well, my A-lister show this Sunday. Thank you again, guys, for everything. We really do appreciate it. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Mwah, mama.